Howdy, homesteaders. We are going to separate our plants. When you're uh, repotting your seed starters, uh, there's some things you do have to consider. Uh, changing it into the uh, pot of your choice. Now these are some standard little garden pots. These little green pots right here. You can find these in a lot of uh, you know uh, plant stores or uh, big box stores, wherever you want to find them. They're, they're not hard to find. Uh, we actually had some of these on hand. These are old. Some of them are actually cracked and brittle. Uh, like this one actually got cracked. So you can see that. We're not going to use that one. Uh, so we do have these, so we're going to use up what we have of these until they're gone. And then we also have this square one right here. It's, I'm sure you've seen these before. Yeah, two of them. Or two of these. Oh, one right inside the other. Oh, all right. That's good to point that out. And then we also have plastic cups, which work just fine. Uh, these are actually fairly short cups. They're not your full-size tumbler. Uh, so these are actually a better choice because you don't need them to be all that deep. So now we're going to go ahead and get started. Another thing too is uh, I am a firm believer in uh, knowing our strengths and weaknesses. Uh, you know, one thing that I'm not as good at, uh, things that I don't really enjoy as much, there are things that are really tedious. If it's extremely tedious and I have to sit there and be really gentle and really delicate with things and I don't really enjoy that all that much, but my wife, uh, she tends to be a lot better with that. So she's going to be separating out the plants and putting them in the pots. I am going to be filling the pots with dirt. So when you understand your strengths and your weaknesses, instead of fighting against each other trying to say who's in control, which uh, <laughs> uh, that's a whole other topic, but instead of doing that, why not just uh, go with what you uh, like doing, uh, go with your strengths and let your partner go with her strengths and work together as a team. One thing about planting these tomatoes, um, they're very hairy. And where they're, they have the hairs up and down the stems, that's where roots can come out and grow. And all this, if I bury it clear up to there, that can all be roots. So I'm going to try to put it in as deep as I can so that eventually, even though it has a nice root started, this all can become roots and it can become a stronger plant. want to make sure that you tamp it down gently to make sure that there's no air gaps in there because um, if there's air gaps um, that means moisture is not getting to the roots or the plant if it's touching the soil where it's going to make new roots and where there's air then uh, where there's no moisture getting to it then it can die die off so you want to make sure it's tamped down gently not too hard but make sure there's no air pockets line speed.
right, looks like I've kind of worked ahead a little bit so I can come out and come outside for a little while. And I got to say, I really uh, am enjoying this time change. Uh, get a little bit more extra sunlight, at least it seems that way. <laughs> you know, only thing a time change is the, just the manipulation of our measuring system is all it is. Uh, it doesn't really change time. It just changes the way we measure it. But anyway, uh, by perspective, it is a little nicer to, you know, uh, several hours after I get off work at 5 o'clock to still have some sunlight that I can enjoy. Uh, so I'm coming out here and I'm going to let the dog go in the house. And this time, I'm hoping it turns out right. All right, Jaspar, you ready to go in the house? <laughs> ready to go in the house? <laughs> Now that's the way it's supposed to go. When I let him off the chain, uh, he just runs for the door, and I like to keep the door just a little bit closed so he can feel like he pushed it open, and he likes to push the door open and come in the house. So that's something he likes to do, and it makes it a little bit easier on me whenever I have to let the dog in at night. How far have you gotten, honey? One tray full, <laughs> one tray full and a couple extra, and it emptied just one <laughs> Right, so we are doing great. good uh, when you're transplanting plants make sure that your uh, soil is fairly saturated you don't want to have dry soil uh, you want to be fairly moist uh, you don't want to be mud but you want to be fairly moist uh, kind of clumpy that way when you do transplant them and you give them a little watering uh, the, the plants have plenty of moisture to, to help them through the shock uh, so last time I put about this much water in there and I'm going to just put this in there, and before I put this in, <sighs> Ew, he's drinking the water that goes in the dirt! Now that my beautiful wife has went ahead and potted all of these for me, I'm going to go ahead and water them in. That's the reason why I have them in these microgreens trays, is the pots have holes at the bottom of them and they're there for a reason to let the water drain out. Uh, you don't want the water to pull up inside of a cup, uh, so you have to have something underneath it to collect that water so it doesn't spill all over the floor. And I am putting this in the house in one of our bedrooms so I don't want to make a mess. So you want to use a tray to catch the water. Another good thing about that is is whenever the water goes down in there uh, it will wick up into the soil. It will wick up into the soil and the roots will eventually find their way down to the bottom of the pot uh, in most cases and it will draw the, the moisture from underneath. 
So you can kind of like do a little bit of underwatering as well. So it comes in pretty handy. And those are all watered in. notice about these pots that we're using is their cups. You know what cups are good for? Holding water. <laughs> That's what they're good for. Uh, but they're not good for holding plants until you make a modification. So I was going to use a scratch all but I'm going to use this thing. I'm going to poke holes in the bottom so that uh, it will drain water. show you guys I showed you the rug last time my this is called a toothbrush rug and um, I learned how to weave them I don't know about five, uh, six or seven years ago these are my favorite some of my favorite colors you can just take sheets and um, I do have some scrap fabric of quilting fabric that's uh, the bright pink ones was quilting fabric and um, you can take any 100% cotton fabric and you can weave these into a rug. Anyways, I just wanted to show you it and see the progress. Uh, if you want me to do a um, teaching on it, put it in the comments below. Oh.